Welcome back to the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and today we are finishing up our series on macromolecules with the daddy of them all, the protein. So let's talk about our objectives for the day. There are four, and they are as follows. The first one, recognize the basic components of a protein. Second, list some of the functions of proteins. Third, recognize the importance of structure to the function of proteins. And finally, compare and contrast the four levels of protein structure. I'm not going to lie, this video could take a little bit longer than the normal 10 minutes. We'll see how we do. So let's get in it. So first of all, a protein. Let's talk about what they are. In the living world, I don't think that there is any more important molecule. You could argue DNA is because DNA is the instructions for proteins. But when it comes to getting anything done, it is proteins that do the work. They are 50% of the dry mass in a cell. And as far as makeup goes, their monomer, we've talked about monomers all the way through this series, are building blocks called amino acids joined together by peptide bonds. So if you put a bunch of amino acids together, you have a polypeptide. Let's talk about those amino acids just a little bit more. There are 20 of them that naturally occur, and all 20 of them are exactly the same except for one little component. If you look off to the right side there, you will see that there is a asymmetric carbon. So we said previously asymmetric carbon is a carbon that has four different things attached to it. Our asymmetric carbon has got an amine group, it has a hydrogen, has a carboxyl group, and then it has this magical R group. The R group is responsible for making each of those 20 amino acids different from the others. The R group is also responsible for giving the amino acids its properties. So all amino acids will be the same except for the R group, and the R group is what makes all the difference between one amino acid and the next. So functions, I just gave you an ugly old list because they do a ton of stuff, but there are major categories. First thing is they are enzymes, which means, no, let me back that up. Enzymes in the body are proteins. Not all proteins are enzymes, but in the body, enzymes are all proteins. They are responsible for speeding up chemical reactions. There are storage proteins. There are proteins that serve to communicate in the body as a hormone. There are motor proteins that cause things like muscles to contract and things like that. You've got defense proteins. That would be your immune system. You have transport proteins that carry molecules throughout your body. You've got receptor proteins that work in the signal transmission from one cell to the next and through the endocrine system. And you've got structural proteins that keep you upright, standing, and make up many components of the cell membrane. So they do a lot of stuff. Like I said, without them, we would not be alive. So when it comes to talking about proteins, it's all about structure and function. Each one of your proteins has got a unique 3D shape, and there are hundreds of thousands of proteins. You can see off on the right-hand side there, there is half of a protein. The picture was too big, so I couldn't show you the other half. But the shape of individual proteins are determined by the amino acids. A bunch of amino acids lined up together are going to have properties unique to that sequence of amino acids. As they interact with each other and interact with their neighbors, they're going to fold up into a specific shape. We'll talk about how that works in a second. But think of proteins as being lock and key. Whatever they are working with has to fit into them as nicely as a key fits into a lock. If they did not fit the shape, then those two things aren't going to work together. Along with that idea, we've got denaturation. Denaturation is when a protein loses its shape. If a protein loses its shape, it also loses its function. Two quick ways to denature a protein is through heat or pH. Heat them up too much, they unravel. That's what happens when you scramble an egg. Or if you put them in the wrong pH, they can unravel. So just remember, if protein does not have the proper shape, it's not going to work properly either. Last thing we need to talk about today are the four levels of protein structure. Now, I have found with students that this is something they have a difficult time with, so stick with me for a little bit. There are four of them. You can see them down the right side there, and you'll see them in a couple formats today. You got primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure. Now, we're going to be kind of starting with the smallest, most specific atomic level structure and then zooming all the way up and out to our functioning proteins. So let's start with primary structure. Things to know about primary structure. It is the sequence of amino acid monomers, and you can think of it as being the letters in the word, or letters in a word. So if you look up here, 
zoomed in atomic structure, you have amino acid, amino acid, amino acid, amino acid, amino acid, so on and so forth. Like I said, there are 20 amino acids, which means that you can combine those things in almost an infinite number of orders and combinations. Sorry, I have email. Anyway, whatever order those amino acids in, that is the primary structure of the protein. Moving on to your secondary structure. Things to know about this is in the secondary structure, you have got alpha helixes and beta pleated sheets. Now you can see both of them off the side here, but your beta pleated sheet is essentially a zigzag shape and your helix is a twisting helix. Now this structure results from the hydrogen bonds in the peptide backbone. As all those amino acids are bound together in their specific order right here, they're going to start interacting with each other and those interactions are going to cause this amino acid chain to fold into pleated sheets or twist into helixes. Note that this polypeptide, this chain right here, can have hundreds of sheets and helixes in the same chain of amino acids. They can kind of uh, alternate with each other or be side by side or whatever. But no, secondary structure is pleated sheets and helixes. All right, let's zoom out just a little bit more to our tertiary structure. In the tertiary structure, we actually get a folded 3D shape. So we have moved from having our amino acids to those amino acids interacting with their neighbors to form these pleated sheets and the helixes. Now, all of the R groups that are hanging off of our amino acids are gonna start to interact with each other and they're going to start to twist and fold into an actual 3D shape. Now, know that in the tertiary structure, you can have a ton of different bonds going on. Secondary structure, it's just hydrogen bonding. Tertiary structure, you can have ionic bonds, so that would be between positive and negative portions. You can have covalent bonds, where R groups are actually sharing electrons with each other. You can have, forgive me for that, you can have van der Waals interactions, which are weak interactions between R groups. You can have hydrophobic interactions where part of the molecule actually folds inward so that it's away from water and the rest of the protein or the rest of the polypeptide chain is protecting it. You can have disulfide bridges, which is a very strong bond between two sulfide or sulfur containing R groups. So just note that we have now made it all the way out to having a folded up polypeptide chain, but we're not yet at a functioning protein. Our functioning protein comes in the quaternary structure, which you see down there at the bottom right of your screen. And in the quaternary structure, you have two or more polypeptide chains grouped together. So on the one you see down there in the right, there's actually four chains that have hooked together with each other and are working together. Some proteins have got fewer, some proteins have got a lot more, but just know that quaternary structure, you've got multiple polypeptide chains that are grouped together into a working functioning protein. So I'm going to run through that one more time. Primary structure is just the letters in the alphabet. It's the sequence of your amino acids. Secondary structure is those amino acids interacting with their neighbors through hydrogen bonding. You have alpha helixes and beta pleated sheets. Tertiary structure is where those sheets and helixes actually start to fold and interact and you get a lot of strong bonding forming between those sheets and the helixes. And then take that one folded up polypeptide chain, put it together with a couple others into a functioning protein, and you are at your level of quaternary structure. So that is your quick run through to proteins. Hope it was helpful. Look forward to seeing you next time on the Lab 207 webcast. Have a good day.